Once upon a time, yes. in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of it's crafty It's gonna be cute, goblins. like they did this in Life is Strange too as well, I love this. The crafty goblins did everything together. Until one day, when darkness overwhelmed the big wooden house in which they lived. Blamed for the darkness, Brother Goblin was forced to leave the forest. Ah, uh, so Goblin. sister had to stay behind. Jail. Ah, uh, Goblin Jail. Ten years later, they were finally reunited. And together, they decided to confront the darkness in the big wooden house. <laughs> the adult Goblin haircuts. Oh, uh, goblins so look weird or big. With their friends in the forest. They found that no one wanted to delve into the long gone past. Of the bar. This is how the goblins found themselves alone in the woods, trying to discover why darkness had submerged the big wooden house. Dun, dun, dun. Ended. It wasn't really him. <laughs> Tomorrow we should play Compass and North Star in the woods. Be sure to wear your hat then. <laughs> you be sure to wear your hat. <laughs> All right, who wants ice cream? Me! Do you think we're gonna get a scene we'll yeah. be in the diner with uh, having the pancakes though? Without a word. Because in real time that's where we're at, isn't it? Buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling. With the cop. And as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone. And with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world. Where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman, alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. And her title. I don't like that story. There were no goblins, and it was depressing. We won't read it again. I love you, Mom. Not me. <laughs> Just kidding. Love you, Mom. Rude. I love you, too. Sleep well and dream, my doves. The doves. So the doves were representative of them. Because in the last episode, they found some, like, handcrafted doves that they said they'd never seen before and wondered if it represented them. Which I think she's still alive, honestly. Ollie? And I think that's maybe why they hadn't seen them before. What a waste. What is that? Ice cream that's been left out? Allison! Ollie! Allison, help! <laughs> Just glugging the tub. God, this music, these little in-between beats are so unsettling. These shots are so good. Yeah, 
yeah, this is all the night that it happened. I killed mom. I killed her. Okay. No. We're not letting ourselves do this again. Come on. Up. My numbing labor's a great way to forget your troubles. Uh, can't we just have coffee instead? No. On your feet, soldier. I was thinking, why does she look so different today? But it's the, um, she doesn't have a beanie on. I think she had a beanie on for, like, the entire episode, Let's didn't she? Let's take a break from packing and sort out the furniture. Mm. If we get enough done, I'll drive you into town and buy you a gallon of ice cream. Yeah, why is the Mint first thing chip, I thought of Star Wars two as gallons. well? Let's do this. She did. Yeah, it was a cool, it was a really cool beanie, but she looks very different with it on. Trash. Goblin face is keep. Dollar sign is donate or sell, and trash can as well. Trash. Are we thinking By the way, I cleared out Christmas? stuff in the bathroom this morning, but I left you the toilet. How very generous of you. This is a very Christmassy jumper, isn't it? I thought we were like approaching Halloween though. Maybe she's just wintry. Hmm. Crummy table and wobbly chairs. Uh, crummy table? What do you think? Let's play the game. I think trash. Nobody wants this. Or sell? Recycle. We can make some pretty good money if we sell this. And I know I'd end up eating on the couch most of the time anyway. Yeah. Somebody oh. might like it in this small town. Oh, I might come God. pick it up for nothing. That's, what's that smell? Easy. Oh, it's a trick of the memory. Sometimes easier to um, sell something than trash it, you know? Wait, what's the... How do I have a memory again? I can't remember what the button is. Is it shift? Where is the memory? What is the smell? Is it outside? Is it here? Play sticky note on them, yes. I want to get this memory first, though. I can't actually remember what the bloody button is. I better check. Well, DL Morph, it's only been a week. Um, boom, boom, boom. Bond, that's it. Space. Yes. Use our twin bonding pet. has been a long week, actually. It does not feel like a week ago that we played this. Smells like delicious garbage. Ooh, yes, delicious indeed. The bear. <laughs> could it be Stinky Pants Sam? <laughs> oh, Stinky Pants Sam! <laughs> Come on now. Sam got that smell getting a skunk out of our barn. Be nice. <gasps> a skunk? What did you do to her? Is she okay? <laughs> sure is. She just went hunting for food and couldn't get back out. All she needed was a little nudge to get her on her way. Sam Kansky, hero of skunk kind. I remember being super impressed by him, and it made me want to be a wild animal superhero too. Yeah, it's the, um, that's a bit like the goblins teasing the bears, isn't it? Because we also have that storybook that we were reading. I love that we took the time to read those about the characters that appear, because it Allison, like plays into it. I asked you to clean up the coffee table three times already. <sighs> Oops, I forgot. Did I miss the opportunity to put a sticky note on them? Can you... Go back over there so I can do that. Thanks. Uh, All so right. Clean them. I'll clean it up. Thanks. While you do that, I'll check out the furniture. I'm guessing you want to keep the coffee table? Um. What do you think? If there's anything you want, speak now. I'm not really planning on bringing furniture to Denali. And if I need a base in Juno, you'll have all the furniture I need. How very non-committal of you. All right, I'll keep it. It's a nice enough table. I really like that armchair. Which one? Musty. Maybe sit in it for a few minutes and see if you get used to the mold smell first. Musty. 
On second thought, never mind. Must do smell. Um, trash this. Another one for the landfill. Get rid of that. And finally, I hate to say it, but the couches get a one-way ticket to the dump. No protest here. I think I have permanent knee damage from a decade of bumping into the corner of those damn things. Well, then that's it for the living room. You are relieved from your duties. Do you think he'll get annoyed? Are you going to keep doing that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you are. Having fun, are we? Loads. This is getting utterly ridiculous. Hey, that's the spirit. <laughs> He's just like, okay, I'm leaving. Come on, one more. Okay. Worth it. We get. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Exposed. I should be a I should be the guard over that. That's a dangerous. Excuse me. What's this? Ugh, gross stain is gross. Uh, what happened? Some unfortunate spillage that brought about the end of indoor tea parties. I hid the stain with my toys. Forgetting that they would eventually be picked up. Brilliant move, Ronan. I was so afraid that Marianne would ground me for the rest of my life. But she didn't, right? No. I remember her saying that that sufficiently adventurous play ensures that accidents will happen. And that it wasn't a big deal. But still, no more tea parties inside. What do we think of the outfit? I like it. I like a good winter jumper. I guess it's finally time to take these pictures down. Yeah. Still deciding what to do with them. Is this us? Um, do we want the pictures? I mean, most of them are pretty happy memories. I guess. You look cute here. That's not me. I mean, it is, but... But not really. I get it. It's just weird. Stick him in a box and myself it? like that again. Put him in storage. Didn't think a picture could throw me like this anymore. Has therapy helped at all? Don't have to oh, look at him. Yeah, definitely. My therapist really heard me when I said I was a guy, and she helped me get ready for the reactions I'd get. You know, it's dealing with other people that's been way harder than figuring myself out. At the end of the day, being able to look in the mirror and see Tyler, that's made the biggest difference. Which is why I'm scheduling my top surgery as soon as we sell this house. No more putting a binder on every morning. God, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, totally. Just so you know, I'll be there to help out when you do. Whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks. All right. You got it, bro. What's your verdict, Ronan? You know what? I'll keep a few. To remind us how far we've come. If this was me, I wouldn't even like look at them. I would just have a box and just I would just sweep them all into the box and then just stick them in a stick them in a garage. Who's this? Oh, is this the cop? Is who is that? There's no audio on it. Okay, I want to know who that is. Oh man, I love this one. <laughs> Why do I look so pissed? I remember loving this. Maybe because Marianne was sticking a camera in your face? Come on, smile, like Alice. Memory. I thought we worked out the cop was the Ice King, but there is a story of, I think, is it the Pelican or somebody who taught us to fish? We'll have to look in the storybook again, because I want to... That's like my favorite thing, is working out who all the characters represent. Come on, honey, smile. 
like Allison. Hold up your fish. It's not my fish anymore. Allison stole it. I feel like this is some. I feel like this is a different character. <gasps> my sister, the fish thief. <laughs> you were just being bratty. Was I though? Yes. All I did was help clean it when we were out on the porch. Eddie had to force you to share. For your punishment, said the Ice King, you shall be banished from the forest. And if you dare come back before the new moon, you shall feel my anger in your gut. Hear it in the wind. Whoosh! <laughs> huh. Do you think the Ice King would really react that way? He may be intimidating, but he's always fair and never mean. Oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe he tells the goblins to help the people they hurt instead? Great idea, sweetie. Why don't we think about it at dinner? I'll put everything away for safekeeping while you go wash your hands. Uh, goblin. Can you put them in the binder so they don't get stained? Of course, love. <sighs> I still think my dark and twisty version was better. We put so many hours into that book. Yeah. Our binder was full of extra drawings and incomplete stories. I think they're all still in the kitchen drawer. We should go take a look. Memories. Lasagna! Lasagna! Finish your salad first. Thank you, Tessa. You're a lifesaver. No, oh, don't worry about it. They're just leftovers from the restaurant. What about Volcano? She needs to eat her lunch the pelican. Too. Oh, you're quite right, love. She can have my corn. I'm just waiting for stuff to happen that shows we're really wrong. Like the whole time we've been like Pelican, go, Ice King. Be hungry too. <laughs> like you're wrong. <laughs> I wouldn't mind being wrong about who the Doesn't bear is because I feel offended. Fed. She always tried to take care of everyone. Okay, let's take a look at what we wanted to see. Allison's first drafts. Right. I'll summer. Because I didn't contribute at all. Come on. I know you did. <sighs> I can't believe she kept all these. You'd think putting them on the fridge for a couple of weeks would have been enough. You know how we thought of ourselves as the goblins? Did you ever get the sense that maybe Marianne was the princess in the stories? I, how uh, I see yeah. this has never occurred she to you. She called her bedroom the princess's <laughs> sanctum. <laughs> and she was all alone in the woods. What? In this house. Until we showed up. She was. Alone. But with a few friends who helped her along. Come on, the way. we've already worked this, the exposition here for them telling the audience, like as if you as the character have Research. not worked this out. So if Marianne was the princess, come on. Then who were all the rest? <laughs> and here we go. Oh my oh, come gosh. Come on, humor me. I I I mean I'm sure this is like to get it for some people, but I just I can't imagine the person that would play this and then be sitting here going, wait, what? These are representative of the people. Like, there's no way. We're not that smart. Yeah, the book. Okay, okay, okay. So, wants me to look in the book. We 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 were reading these. We still got some some of these to read, but I'm trying to like read them when we meet the people who we think they represent, because then it like adds more to the story. So, we still have a few story times left in here. Real as so smart. Ah, so it's yeah. But it's gonna make okay, so maybe finding the Ice King collectible in the police station didn't mean that he was the Ice King. The bear was the most helpful one. You're welcome. He was always around. I am. Stalking her. What? what? No. I mean, he was kind of always there. Lurking. Listen. Simple. Hmm. Pelican. She was the most generous one. <laughs> yeah. But there was always a catch. Definitely the friend. Oh, poor Moose. Really didn't do him justice. Hmm. 
I guess he is the moose, though. I think we got that one wrong. Ironic, huh? Considering he was the lawful good one. Yeah, Eddie Too must bad be the, the moose. Too bad the isn't really just. You done? Uh, do you think the Mad Hunter is the monster, or what happened to the person in Tyler's memory, like brain blocked it out? I, for me, at the moment, I think the Mad Hunter is going to be representative of like mental illness. It would be my current guess. It is like a manifestation of the darkness, you know. Uh, what am I swapping? Okay, so it's in order. So we've got the bear, and then we swap these here. You. Go here. No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, not you two. Mm, this one. And then there. So we, we're thinking pelican for grocery store lady, moose for Eddie, and bear for soup, yeah? Is that what we're thinking? I can't see it being any other way. You stumped? No. Just asking the people in my head, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Although I'm hoping them introducing this concept means we might get some fantastical, like, imagery of them in this episode. That would be fun. All right, I think I'm done. You sure? Yeah, pretty confident. How do you like them apples? You know, I think you might be onto something. Apple what about sauce. these guys? I don't see them being real life people, or this one. What? What do you? What do we have? Yep, totally Marianne. Why a princess though? Why not a queen? She hated authority. Yeah, she'd have been a terrible ruler. Okay, what's this? The hunter. We don't have anything to say about that. No? Nothing? You better hurry, or the mad hunter will catch Oh, every us. each one's gonna be a memory. This oh. way. Okay. What's what's going on? I I don't know. Is he here? Is he really here? Uh, I'm scared. Go away! I forgot about that. We'd been pretending he was there. And then, suddenly he oh. was. That was the only time that happened, right? Allison. Oh my god, we were hoping that they would include Wait. some supernatural stuff it in this. It felt way too real. It was... Us. Pushing our imagination way too far. Ah. Great. Hello? Sam Kansky, Grandmaster of Bad Timing. We're not done with this conversation. Should be like, yeah, hi Sam. We just realized that Morning, Sam. monsters are real. Can you come oh, back? Hi, goblins. I ran into Chief Brown, who said you were starting to clean up on the house this morning, so uh I kind of figured you might need some supplies. That's thank you. That was very thoughtful. Yeah, the smile's so oh, good. I put uh, a clip of it on. Also TikTok. got something for you, Tyler. It was such a great moment in the last step. Every man needs a good knife. Cute. There you are. Thanks, Sam. That's very sweet. Good. Good. Yeah. Oh, and before I forget, for the lady of the house. Because he took a minute to catch on, didn't he, in the last step? So that's a nice, like, he's gonna wait. It was your mom's favorite it. recipe. Still make it darn near every week. Think of her every time. All right, mate. It's been ten years. You might want to. Uh, thanks, but we don't have a stove. Bit obsessive. Still no electricity. Oh yeah, the fuse box is busted. <laughs> Just another thing I've been meaning to put back together around here. Where is it? I can take care of it. Oh, I don't doubt you can. But uh, I've been kicking this thing back to life for the last twenty-some years. 
I'll give you a hand. All right. Get a hobby, Sam. For me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. We'll I'm kidding. Right it's a you. bit. It's a bit. It's fine. He's the bear, right? Bears know when when it's a fellow bear, we can mock each other. It's okay. Bears love banter. It's like me and Vlad. You know. It's fine. Well, I guess old bears can learn new tricks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Wait, I don't know why I'm not old. Let's I don't know why I agreed to that. get our electricity back on. That was I don't I don't I don't relate to that at all. So, um, how's school? I graduated already. Outdoor studies. Oh, outdoor studies. Well, it's a good thing I came along when I did. You know, I built this here barn for your mama. Or your mama. Uh, yeah, you really helped. You really helped her out, huh? Oh, you know, just a few chores here and there. I was, I was glad to help your mother. She... No. I can never bring myself to leave her high and dry. Anyways... Let me find that darn key. Uh... Wait. Wait, Sam. You have more of our keys? Yeah. The one for the barn's called a railroad key. See, it's got this special tip that you can... Fascinating. I'll take that off your hands now. Well, I, uh... Figured I might still need to do some maintenance. I mean, the fact that he came in here last week, he just hangs out here sometimes, doesn't he? He came in here like a bit drunk just to chill on the couch. Haven't you been taking care of this place? You didn't oil the doors? What? You think I just hang out here all day or something? Yeah. Here, son. Give me a try. Good. Okay, when you twist it as far as you can to the left, give it a nice little jerk. I like what they're doing with this because it would have been so easy to like the first impression with this character was that it was going to be the two dimensional like you know his refusal to accept like the transition oh, but now it's like being really, really open nice. now <laughs> yeah uh, well, that's easy enough to fix now that fuse box oh no 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 you and you are going to clean up your mess I'll take care of the fuse box but I didn't do it I'm not asking Go on. <gasps> hmm? Seems good. I'm a genius. I can do simple mathematics. Yeah, I like how there was a whole conversation going on, but I was having to... Two sums in my head. You damn fool. Everything okay? You, uh... You two look like you got this all in hand, so, um... Hmm... Tough. Things were just being really nice what between them, about? but then he has to remember that he kind of, or at least he thinks that he killed her, but as we know, it was the other way around. Which I was going to say, I think that reveal at the end lends itself to explaining, uh, wait, what's the sister's name? This person's refusal during the last app. When we were thinking, why is she being so, like, not wanting to confront things, and it's because, you know, he took the fall for her. Allison, that's it. Allison, do you know who this is? What did you find? Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. That's Carol, Eddie's mom. I've seen other pictures of her, but never this one. Man, look at Brown. And Marianne. She looks really happy. I just had a thought, actually. Huh? Has they said anything Careful about the their dad? Ow. Broken. Are you okay? 
It stings. Let's go see mom. Like at all. Don't you get mad. We weren't even supposed to be here. Because that could be a that could be a twist as well, couldn't it? That could be something to come out. I feel something strong. It's making my teeth tingle. It's gonna get infected. Eddie is the cop, I believe so, yeah. Who adopted us. Uh, Allison. But wouldn't let she us see Tyler. To her and Eddie. Can't even see the memory in the snow. Where are you going? Things were different when she was around. We were family, Eddie. How could you do this to me? Shh. Look. I had to make that call. What were they talking about? I can't figure out what's going on. I don't know, but I remember that whatever Eddie had to do, whatever that call was about, it was tearing him up. Tearing him up? He was being a total cop, and Marianne got pissed and threw him out. Here, I'm gonna show you what I remember. Over here, Allison. I had to make that call. I was just following the law. Oh yeah? And this little visit right here? What would the law say about this, huh? Look, I didn't have to come out here, but I did. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Marianne. <sighs> I said get out! Mwah. Out! What? She didn't throw the picture at him. You sure about that? He was being a complete dick. How can you be sure? We were eavesdropping. We could barely see a thing. What do you think happened then? <sighs> Conflicting memories. Because that's how he sees Eddie, isn't it? I had to make that call. We have a different impression. I was following procedure. Of what this I'm guy. legally required to do. Why are you here? Pretty sure this isn't procedure. I wanted you to hear it from me. Please leave. Mary Ann. I'm sorry. Please just go. How do we keep remembering the same thing so differently? It was a long time ago and, well... Memory is a tricky thing. Wait, when did that happen? I'm not sure. I think it was the exact same day she attacked you. That's what I thought. Mm. Uncle Eddie said he hadn't seen Marianne for weeks. Yeah, that was bullshit. And what was all that about following the law? What was he doing here exactly? Mm. He must have had his reasons for not telling us. Look. I know he took care of you, but that doesn't make him incapable of lying. I can't see him being that cold with Marianne, even if he was being a cop. I mean, I can, but who knows? Don't let me pick which one I believe. Thing, huh? Damn it! <laughs> oh, it's gonna make me pick which one I believe. And so last time we went with our own memory. Marianne was sad. Marianne was angry. I feel like we should go with Tyler on Get this one because I don't want to just like keep not You're believing. You know? Don't. I think last time it made a lot of sense for us to go with our impression of it. So we went we went with our impression of it in the grocery store with the Pelican. We also sided with Eddie in the police station at the end of the last episode. So I think I mean we can commit to one way or another, but I feel like we should throw some trust Tyler's way on this one and be like, but yeah, maybe she was angry. Maybe you're right. Right? You're a goddamn hypocrite. I think Marianne could be angry and maybe I'm remembering that wrong. Get out. Especially if after that she went and got a gun that night, you know? This is the you're night that it happened. Goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here. 
Let's go with this one. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here. Get off my property it's honestly right really now. interesting it makes me think like what exactly is this power that they can have it be different because it's not like they're manifesting the true past they're manifesting like a representation of what they think happened which makes it so all unreliable narrator brown came out here and bullied marianne the same day she attacked us and then lied about it now what we go and get a straight answer from him right now yes I'll go get my car Which in turn raises questions about that mad hunter well, scene as to whether that's a real do without us? thing. Fuck the trash. F the trash. F it. Yeah, he did. He did porridge for us, as we say, so. Man, I can't believe Bron lied. I mean, I may not be the guy's biggest fan. But he's always talking about the truth and the law and shit. Do you have to be so happy about it? What? I know you've been waiting for something like this. Something that proves Eddie's an asshole. But gloating about it is really not cool. Oh, it's Tina. I gotta take this. Yeah, j just a sec. I'm parking the car. I feel like it's also more... Mm, I don't know. They could both have a bias thing because obviously she was adopted by him. So there's the bias there that she will have grown up looking up to him as a savior. But also there's the bias there from Tyler because he stopped so Allison from seeing then. him for years and years, you know? No, it's just give me a sec. It's probably somewhere in between. And we're just going to have to try and ride the line, I think. I'm tempted to like fall one way just for the story and the ending, but... Okay, Tina, what's going on? I think we'll balance it Hi, out. Hi, I've got someone who is super interested in seeing the house. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, when? They're just in the area for a couple of days, so they'd like to come by day after tomorrow. It's gonna be a, it's oh. gonna be somebody. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be ready. That quick? Han, this guy is very motivated, but I know he's looking at other properties. It's not like you've had people breaking down the door. I appreciate that, but we've kind of got a lot going on over here. Did I mention it would be an all-cash offer? Uh, okay. Do it. Yeah? Yep. Great. I'll set it all up and uh, send you the details. Later, hon. God, I don't like that that was a, a choice. When it does that, that means you, like, changed something. I don't like that. I feel like I should have said no. <laughs> God, I'd love to be able to make something like this. I don't want to see who it is. Because that's so fishy. Like, nobody's been interested in it, and now we're here, and suddenly someone's interested in it with an all-cash offer. And they desperately want to come and have a viewing. Come on. Looks like you found a nice spot. Beautiful. You've been here before, right? Try it. In Red Dead, not in real life. I feel like I've been here before. So, Tina? Tina West, our realtor. Oh, that Tina. What'd she need? Well, we have an interested buyer. Tina's gonna show him the house day after tomorrow. Oh, great. Apparently he'd be paying cash, but he's just in town for a few days, so. Mm. I mean, we're not signing anything in blood. It's just a showing. Wonder if we're gonna end up wanting to keep I it. I know. Look, we both need this money and it'll take at least a few weeks, right? There's plenty of time to figure out all this Marianne stuff. It's fine. You did it. It's done. Let's move on. So, before Tina called, he doesn't we seem were happy talking. About it. Yeah? I'm not happy your foster father fucked up. Oh, yeah? Because you sure sounded he like it. He hid information about Marianne. I know! You just don't have to rub it in. He doesn't get a pass just because this is uncomfortable for you. I'm not giving him a pass. It's just... hard. This whole damn situation is hard. You think I liked learning all that shit about Tessa? 
I like how we talk about it like it's a movie and it's we forget that we even have you know we can make choices to you but it's my home Tyler like there will probably be a choice if we want to keep it my family it will be up to us possibly and as much as I want answers I'd rather not lay waste to my entire life to get them You seem pretty eager to ditch all those friends and family, Allison. Apparently, a cash offer is all it takes. What? I'm ready to move I on. just said I would see But that see doesn't mean I want to burn every bridge offer. on my way out. Tyler, please. I just didn't want to say no. Like, we're trying to sell it. If you want to have a combo, we can have a combo. Eddie warned me about this. I'm not bringing up Eddie. Although, I do like a bit of j -j -j drama. You're going to sulk all day? I like this view, change the subject. Do you know what, let's just stoke these fires. It's gotta to come to a head at some point. Uncle Eddie warned me about this. Oh, I'm thinking in my mind, okay. Oh, yeah? oh it's what in their Uncle voice. Eddie have to say? Oh, do you know what, in for a penny. Just that we've led pretty different lives. We might not really see eye to eye like we used to. Ah, I see. Chief Brown said you shouldn't trust me, so you don't. Got it. Oh, come on. I didn't say that. You didn't say that. To Is me that fair. really what you think? I don't know. It's just that ever since I got back, I felt like I was crashing your party. Well, that's all in your head, Ty. I'm not sure what else to say. Confront the issue. Feeling this? Found you, North Star. Okay, now you're the star and I'm the compass. Okay, and don't cheat. I know you were sending me fake hints last time. I did not. If they made a sort of some glasses you could wear or something that would project your memories out like sci-fi movie style and you could watch your memories like a movie in this way, would you want to do it? Would you like buy a pair? Let's just like ignore the price and everything else, but would you actually be interested in projecting yes, you some did. memories out? Okay, okay, I won't do it again. They always do you that, like in old sci-fi films. Cheating. Because you totally did. It was a cool game. Guessing where you were just by feeling what you felt. And you can pick what memories they are, obviously. Mm -hmm. It'd be so interesting. It'd be so interesting to see stuff from another perspective and like watch it, I guess. It'd be, uh, yeah, it'd be fascinating. No one else could play it with us. That was the beauty of it. For real? You never wanted any other friends? No, not really. I mean, we had each other. That was enough for me. Hey, I really am sorry I gave Tina an answer without talking to you first. Okay, but that wasn't an option. It's okay. You probably made the right call. You were right to call me out earlier. I was being a jerk about Eddie. I'm all for enjoying the wins as they come, but maybe not at the expense of my father figure. I'll try my best. We made up. So I have to warn you, I'm not sure we're getting any answers out of Eddie. You won't have a choice. We're not 10 years old anymore. He tries to protect me from everything. Occupational hazard. He was always so worried about how I was left out at school, so he'd make me throw these huge birthday parties and oh invite no. Did everyone. Nobody come? And they'd all have to show up because you were the chief's daughter? Bingo. Oh, that's good. But then they didn't actually talk to me, uh -oh. so I felt like a stranger in my own house. Okay, not good. I know the feeling. <sighs> I'm wondering, like, I think as well the possibility might be... I mean... 
Eddie Deplace. I think he might ha he might have known. I think that might be part of why he hides stuff. I think he realized he's not going to be tricked by a couple of kids. He probably saw the scene. We probably had like blood all over our hands or something stupid. I think he knew it was us and he like let it happen. Hello? What was that? Let's have a little walk around. Hey! Ah, look what I found! Alright, relax. Aha! I knew it was still here. I knew we'd been here before. We claimed it as part of the Ronin Kingdom. And it still is. All it needs is a little update. Yeah, yeah. Good Sam's knife. What are you doing? How handy. What I wanted to do back then, but I didn't have the guts. To a T. There, looking better already. You're right. Way better. What's the plan? We go inside and calmly ask Eddie why he was there that day. All right. I can't wait to see what the news was. Let's try to let him get his side of the story out. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Something like police business, something Mr. set Bell. her off. I'll be sure to let him know. Maybe it was yes, like have it all written down. the house have being repossessed day, or something. What else could it be? Morning, Missy. How do you get stuck working reception? Rose called in sick this morning. I'm covering for her while I try to get my paperwork done. What are you doing here? Just checking in with Uncle Eddie. I'm guessing from the identical features that this is Tyler. Tyler, Denise, Denise, Tyler. Wilson, could you tell Officer Vincenzi that I'll be... Oh. Good morning, Allison. Hi, Uncle. I'm gonna take Dr. Torres' statement. No need for Vincenzo. Uncle to Eddie. <laughs> hey, Unc. He doesn't seem like he's in the best of moods. Did he teach about fireworks? Yeah, though, eh? I don't know what's going on, but he's been a little off all day. Good luck. Uncle Nige would have left you in the lurch, son. I would have adopted you both. Don't worry Great. about that. He has an excuse to brush us off. I'm sure he'll make time if we say it's important. Oh, hello, kids. Hello, middle-aged adult. Tyler Ronan. Good to see you again. You've gotten tall. That usually happens Speaking between ages 11 and 21. Speaking of fresh trims. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, uh, welcome home. <laughs> Holy moly, what is on your head? So, apparently they keep all the case files right here. Jesus, you scared me. Sorry. Anyway, if Brown's not going to be straight up with us, we should just read it for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, all right. Oh my god, as if you wouldn't, like, prank somebody all the time if you could talk to them in, says here you work at like, your heads together. That sure is a commute. It certainly is. What's your usual working hours? I already looked at all this stuff. At one of the only hospitals in southeast Alaska. I'm basically always on call. Hello, I'm yeah, interrupting. Good morning, Chief Brown. I like how he made a thing of thinking that he would make an excuse that he was too busy to avoid it. And our idea of getting him to open up about it and talk about it is to just interrupt a conversation at his place of work, like whilst he's working. <laughs> Good idea, gang. We'd like to see our mother's case file. We talked to Greg's. We were hoping to file a request for access today. Excuse me. Come on. Come on. You can fill out the paperwork, but the file won't be ready for a few days. How long is it going to take, exactly? That depends. 
three days. A week. A week? Aren't all the files just upstairs? Yeah, but the approval process takes time. I don't know what you're looking for in that file. I was the officer in charge of the case, and there's nothing you two don't already know. Look, guys. I've got a victim waiting to finish your statement. Oh, we, we interrupted a victim statement? Right. We're so rude! Oh my god. Oh, I hate when he's stubborn like that. So what now? Of course, Miss Torres. We get it ourselves. <coughs> well, he's obviously not going to give us the truth. So I say we go get it ourselves. Where do you think they'd stash her file? I don't know. The archive room? Maybe Eddie's office? Wait, you're not seriously thinking of breaking and entering a police archive? Yeah, I am. That was the uh, tease for the next step, wasn't it? Go big or go home. I feel like, personally for me, I feel that like the Eddie thing is going to be about protecting us. I think anything he's doing or has done has been about for the good of us both. Hey, what are you two up to over there? I'm going upstairs. Everything all right? Uh, yeah, everything's what? fine. We're just, uh, I was just telling Tyler where the upstairs bathroom is. Tyler, help me out here. Oh, uh, yeah. Toilet emergency, lake water, you know, mother nature's juice cleanse. And there's a bathroom just past the break room, behind you. First door on your right. Forget it, Tyler. There's no way we're getting upstairs out in the open like this. It's too suspicious. I'm going to poop my pants, Eddie. Look around. Yeah. Okay. Act normal. I kind of want to see how he's going to sell the fact that turning the lights off is a distraction. <laughs> right? Like, how? Maybe some of them don't work. Oh, oops. Tyler. Wow. That was smooth. Dude, we are pros. We're like a couple of spies. I'm in position. What now? Turn right when you exit the station and follow the side of the building. The staircase will be right there. I did not see that working. Good now? Yeah, I need to smoke. You should think about quitting. Only gets harder the longer you do it. Yeah, I know. While you're at it, get your sister to stop too. <sighs> Thanks for the judgment. By the door. Come on. I'm so impressed with us. Was so cool. I feel like James Bond. You took control of your destiny. Own it. This is true goblin scheming. Yeah, oh, I bet they used to get up to so much. That's why they were so good at it. A couple of goblins, you know. Definitely. All right, we're in. Thanks, Lauren. How old is Brown? 38. Oh, wow. Graduated really young. Youngest officer to ever join the DCPD. If Eddie catches us in here... There's no turning back now. Young boy. It's gonna, um, it's gonna show up though, He's like... Personnel files. On the log. Department budgets, but zero case files. You're gonna know. Looks like this is where Brown keeps all his personal mail. Looks like he's working with the Office of Child Services on the case. None of our business. Mm. Delivery attempt successful. The Howard's deposition. Why is Brown on a first name basis with the director of Fireweed? Oh. What'd you find? It's an invoice. Eddie Brown, he'll find it and close the final invoice for resident Tyler Ronan. The Fireweed Administration would like to thank you for all of the support you've given us over the years. He's been paying for us. That's a lot of money. He's been paying for us to be moves. there at you Fireweed. Make you well, now I feel like I'm in his debt. In secret. 
What is this period as well? So this is... Does it say? It doesn't say if it's like monthly, but it's $3.2 thousand dollars. Due date 25th of the 3rd, 2012. I thought we were in 2015, am I crazy? Did I make that up? I don't remember the date being 2012. Um, common charges, health insurance. Pay the due amount by the 25th, pro rate, pro rata through. Are you sure you checked all the emails? reading about some, some of my own history. Thank you. You applied to a summer drama program back in 2009? I did, but they rejected me. Michael and I were supposed to go together. He went, but I was stuck here for the summer with no one but Justin Beaver for company. Why? Well, uh, this letter says you got in. What the hell? So he just turned it down? Wow. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wow, she got into university and he didn't give her the letter. Oh my god, why does he just left this out though? This is so stupid. <laughs> it's like it's great revelations, but it's so stupid that he's just left that there. Um, you're a cop, sir. I think he would have shredded that or put it away somewhere. But um, you know, we'll let that slide just so we can easily find that information. It's got to be gamified, isn't it? It's been Isn't there for like amazing? seven years. Doesn't make any sense. Oh dear. He got out three years ago, but I thought Fireweed was like where we went after. Maybe we didn't go to prison. Maybe it was like a sort of juvenile retreat or something. And then we, because we were a mentor for the last three years, maybe it didn't count. But I thought it was like a, I just thought that's where we were after juvie. I don't know. You have to pay to go to juvenile prison, though? Like, why Why was he paying for us to be in prison? I Brown really wants everyone to know what a fine, upstanding citizen he is, doesn't he? He's a genuinely good person. And saying that here makes me feel even worse. That's a bit controlling. Oh, here's the moose, though. That's, yep. Huh. He the hey, moose. You. Though we are destined to burn, we emerge as stardust. Is that? Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. Burn it. Burn it with fire. Floating amid the Perseids, I search for you, my owl wade in the dragon's head, I roam alone. While other stars burn into my zone, but they cannot be observed, for I see only you. And push the others out of my milky way into another galaxy and remove the gradients to better view your radiance and though we are destined to burn we emerge as stardust and make the universe anew and there is only me and only you tell me why nothing better though we are destined to burn we emerge as stardust is that oh no <laughs> oh yes burn it Burn it with fire. Is this like, I think something, uh, she wrote? Huh. The Delos Police Force is getting a new officer. Finally. Brown looked at our file this morning. Wait, what? What does that mean? I don't, I don't know. But there's a reference number. R68653. So if, if the files haven't been digitized yet, maybe Eddie is requesting them to make some changes before it is. But man, what are they dragging their feet for, taking this many years to even get on it? Please tell me you know what the code is. To the highly confidential police archive? Then how am I supposed to open the door? I spent hours playing next to this room. Uh, 69, 69. The keypad does this little tune. Dum da dee do. <laughs> Seriously? Go on, try. Dum da dee do. How did that tune go again? Dum da dee do. Bang 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 bang. Hacks. Dum da do. Yes.
Uh, looks like they're finally going digital. Oh, that's right. I remember Eddie complaining about this. They're gonna have to resort. Ah, uh, everything's being digitized. That makes right. sense. Why it's only They've just happening. They digitized their closed files, but only the ones before 1990. Meaning. Meaning our file is still somewhere in those boxes. Perfect. A room of scattered case files and a half-done sorting system. Yep. This is gonna be so fun for you. I'm gonna go keep a lookout. What? At least somebody Why else. do I have to be the one stuck with box duty? <laughs> Alright. If anyone sees me, I'll have a better excuse for being there. Creepy Reach out if you need anything. R68653. Look it up. Look it up, she says. Okay. Well? So far, I'm not seeing anything we didn't know already. It does reference some other files and audio recordings, though. You might be able to look those up on the computer. Even if our file hasn't been digitized yet, they may already have it in the appendix. Boom, boom, boom. Coroner took possession of body. Ah, there was a body then. Okay, my theory's out. Interviewed children at station stated that after Miner's name, redacted. Ronan's hair was cut short by sister, redacted. Ronan, Marianne Ronan threatened, redacted. Ronan with a gun when redacted. What was that game that we played where redacted was a thing? We kept saying that. I don't remember. Uh, she pursued a child to the docks. Uh, redacted stabbed Ma Ronan still. Well, Marianne, who was still threatening the child, fell into water. Uh, witnesses state they called 911 shortly after. Canvassed crime scene. Did not recover pair of scissors. So Eddie claimed he didn't find the scissors. Presented case to DA Cruz. Charged minor with homicide. Redacted. Maybe it was control. Seems like a very control thing. information and rap sheet 24 hour homicide report references zero five oh i'm supposed to look at the reference oh. 05 r627 Five something. Zero five R sixty two seven sixty six. Nope. I feel like I looked at them all. There, this music. Not this one either. Uh, where's the damn box? You finding anything? What's in the box? I don't... No, that's not it. All the O5s are over here. R61, R68, R63, 2008. Maybe it's uh, R61. Okay. I need to check out 05, R61, 889. There. 
So no autopsy. Report of homicide. I saw, um, again, a TikTok. That's where I get all of my news and my references these days. Uh, somebody bought... You can buy, like, a murder mystery pack on Amazon, and then they spent the evening working it out with their partner, like, like a puzzle game. It just comes with all these case files and stuff that you read through and try and work out what happened. I was like, that looks like the funnest thing. <laughs> That's what I feel like we're doing now. She was 5'6", 138 pounds and 41 years old, born July the 8th, 1964. She spoke no other languages and she was unemployed. Uh, on dock, child stabbed, pair of scissors fell into the lake. Recent reporting employees, Eddie Brown and Holt. Uh, minors' names redacted, one shotgun recovered. Registered owner, Samuel Kensky. Okay. I found a summary of everything. Wow. This is a real detective novel. Brown's quite the wordsman. He's not a writer, Tyler. <clears throat> Crime summary. On March the 1st, 2005, at around 10 o'clock, the victim, Mary Ann Rowan, and a 41-year-old white female exited her home and entered her garage to start loading a Rassler 31219 mm shotgun shortly after her... This is as close as we'll get to a true crime podcast, by the way. Ronan, 11 years old, entered the garage to display a new haircut given by sister. According to witness, when she saw the child's haircut, Mary Ann became enraged and threatened with shotgun fled the garage towards the lake, calling for help. Mary Ann followed, still armed, out onto dock on southern side of property. Hearing the noise, the witness, Ronan, also came out of the house towards the dock where she observed Ronan, under threat from Mary Ann, defend themselves by stabbing mother with a pair of scissors. At the time, both witnesses... Yeah, it's like one of those cheesy shows, isn't it? Bum bum. Mysteries coming up tonight. These twins... At 10.29, Officer Christian Holt received a phone call detailing the incident. Was dispatched to the scene upon arrival, set up a containment of the scene, began a crime scene log. Tending to juveniles. On March the 1st, Holt notified his partner by telephone of the incident being dispatched to the scene. Holt and Brown arrived at the scene at 10.58. They noted the crime scene was located entirely outdoors. Canary Road is a secluded road, mostly comprised of a few residential cottages. Detectives observed a loaded wrestler shotgun on the docks. No round had been discharged. A witness stated that heard screaming while upstairs in bedroom, ran down the stairs, looked over kitchen windows, saw sibling and mother on docks, threatening her child with a gun, tried to run away, threatened that she was going to shoot, I'm going to kill you, stabbed with a pair of scissors, trying to escape, fell into water unconscious. Is that it? Hmm. There might be other references on the computer. Mm, 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 mm. Oh yeah, here we go. Now we've got some more stuff. Dun, 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 dun. Redacted, yeah, I guess they would be, although I also wonder if that's part of the game which has actually been sort of, it's been avoiding like dead naming, hasn't it? So I feel like it might be part of that as well, but I would assume with miners it would be. So then we have to like, this is like her story, we have to pick tags. The Ronin kids. Oh, recordings. Yes. Dallas Crossing Police Department. Here we go. I wish the music was a bit quieter. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. I can hear you. It, it's my mom. She she fell in the water and she's not coming up. Okay. Where are you now? Home. We're home. Are you alone? Where's your dad? It's just me and my sister. All right, honey, can you give me your address? 12 Cannery Road. Please, hurry. Just stay right where you are, okay? We're sending someone out to help you. Don't hang up! Uh, 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 uh. 
Betty Brown. So we listen to that one. That's the only recording. Yeah, I mean, it confuses it. There's a lot of confusion going on anyway with the memories and everything, isn't there? Ronan sentencing. 05R6. References 05R63325. Sure it is. Nailed it. Jesus. Unbelievable. Allie, Tessa called fucking social services on us. And Eddie went along with it. What? Where are you? What's going on? Yeah, it's been a great part. I just wish the mix was better. But actually, it's been so cool going through these. Are we done? Are we done? Are we done? Shit. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, Tyler. I couldn't stop him. He's coming your way. Uh-oh. Get out. Uncle, I... We didn't mean I'm to... I'm not going to repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I said move it. H hey. <laughs> Get off me. Rather spend the night here? Come on! I said don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky, your family. I feel like we should take this in private. You're right. Family. And for Allison's sake, we should talk. About what? We saw our file. We know about social services. Why? Why did you turn your back on her? Why did Tessa? Okay. Yeah, you're right. We need to talk. Phew. So as we know from the last thing, you might not get people's full confessions about stuff, so we gotta try and it was tempting to go for the drama there, but actually we want to hear what they have to say, don't we? We have to make sure The winter before out. your mother's death was... hard. Devil's Crossing was snowed in for months. Most roads were closed and... plane supplies were scarce. Everyone was struggling. Especially Marianne. I just noticed we're back in our beanie. Yeah. She was always just scraping by. And that winter left nothing to scrape up. Even if locals had found time to help her. You know, I'm, I'm not sure your mother would have accepted. Because this is the one that was in the story with the pelican. It was about the princess moving there right before and not being prepared and needing the food, wasn't it? And then Tessa gave us like a feast during the whole snowed in thing. This was the time. What if Tessa was just bringing food over as an excuse to make sure we were okay? I mean, you just don't know what way it's going to fall, you know? You're saying Tessa reported our mother because she was having supply issues? Tessa came to me because she was honestly concerned. Right. I was legally required to report Tessa's complaint, even if I didn't agree. So you took her word for it and called child services? Failure to provide adequate food, lack of appropriate supervision, Inattention to a child's psychological care? Like it or not, she had a case. What? It's kind of That's his bullshit. job. It's kind of his job. Just following the law then. Right. To look out for you guys. Is that why you came Come over on. that day? The day she died? To warn her about social services? <sighs> she loved you two so damn much. She deserved a chance. I... 
I didn't see it coming. She... I don't know. Right there, she... Must have decided it was over. Sad. I thought always telling each other the truth was our number one rule. Still is, little moose. And yet you still lied. Little moose. I didn't want you two putting yourselves through unnecessary hurt. But you're adults and that was your choice to make. Um, Cute nickname. I'm truly sorry. Oh, bless you, Eddie. Thank you, Uncle. That's bullshit, or just like that. I mean, I don't think it is. I get what Tyler, where Tyler is coming from, but he did what he had to do. Just like that, huh? Must be nice to have a daughter who lets you off the hook that easy. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but you have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past 10 years what I could have done different. I know I made a big mistake with you two here. And you've got every right to be angry. Being a father, well, it's a pretty tough job. I've tried my best. And I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. Do you guys remember how old we are, actually? How old are these twins? I want to say... Like, 19? But I don't remember. Maybe we were, like, 20s. 21? Bit late for adoption, mate. Um... Ooh! We could get there with time or no. Oh, what do you think? Big choice. What say you? Hmm. I want to say time. I feel like, you know, these revelations are that he was partly doing his job, partly had the best interests of us at heart as well. And he was taking care of us from a distance, paying for our being there at that facility. I'm open to getting there. But it's going to take some time before we're a big, happy family. I respect that. Aww. It's hard work rebuilding trust. But you've got a place here whenever you need it. Group hug? Uh, no. Yeah, a bit soon, a bit soon. Uh, absolutely not. Ruined the moment there, Eddie. It was starting to get emotional. Thanks for that. All right, I'm really going to have to kick you out now. No rest for the wicked, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Them as wicked as it gets. I'll see you both later. I found it emotional, the, um... Just as Tyler saying, like, yeah, with time, and then the putting the ring on, that was... A really nice moment because we know how important it is to Eddie and his culture, right? Tyler, what's up? So uh, I saw the invoice from Fireweed. When you were going through my stuff? Right. I, uh. Your ring looks good on us. We don't us. have to talk about it. Oh, uh. Actually, no. I'm not gonna let you tough guy your way out of this. You didn't have to do that, but you did. And going to Fireweed was everything yeah so thank you okay <laughs> okay tyler you're welcome we know how much that place meant to us leaving it i uh feel like i owe you an apology oh yeah what for breaking and entering invasion of privacy sorry 
it was messed up. <laughs> don't worry about it. Apology accepted. Just don't ever pull that shit again. Well, see you around then? You know where to find me. Hug button. Hug button needed. Should we go? Let's be off. Allison. What? You feel like shit. How can you tell? Because I feel like shit. Oh yeah, the stories. I completely forgot about those. We'll check. What are we gonna do about Tessa? Nothing. Look, we're not gonna do anything. That's enough, Tyler. Talk to Tessa. Why? What are you looking for? What are you expecting her to say? Let's kill her. What? I thought she loved us. Who said that? Really? Chief Brown, is it true? Is she? Twin crimes. Let's oh get that God. body count up. Ch children, I... Tessa. Tessa, you need to leave. Come on, kids. Everything is going to be all right. Come on, okay? sis. We did it You're before. Be we okay. can do it again. Go home. You can't be here right now. <laughs> too soon, too soon, too much. Mm -mm -mm. I am, of course, joking. I don't even blame Tessa, really. If she, I mean, she could have, you know, we don't know how many times she checked in and thought there was something going on, but again, I'm sure she did it thinking that we were in danger. I guess we're about to find Where out. Where is everybody? Tessa's gotta be around somewhere. It seemed like she really tried to help as much as oh, she could over a long period of time, and then I guess she was just at her wit's end with it and didn't know where else to turn, but. But given who is here, we can't count out the rapture quite yet. Caution, bear in area. Oh, it's that old man off the boat. Breather. I'm gonna do a bit of shopping. You look for Tessa, okay? Hey. Yo, what Come if on. the old man is the mad hunter? We know that he's here hunting. Just as I was finishing up, I see yeah? A big old From the ferry? He's literally a hunter. He was gonna go hunting moose. Oh god, I hope that's not like something to do with Eddie. Yes, sir. Wait, you said you were near Crystal. She's as closed up that way, yeah? Hey, man, when the Lord opens that kind of door, you walk right through. Yeah, that's not exactly legal. I got a bull moose in my truck and a bull tag in my pocket. Who's gonna know the difference? Doesn't make it right. Would it be too on the nose if the hunter is the hunter? I was talking to a damn boy scout. Hmm, soup. Hello again. Doing some shopping? Yep. Just the essentials. Well, don't let me stop you. So, I, I heard you were shooting moose outside your permit area. Not really any of your business now, is it? Come on. I'm not gonna report you. But it's a shitty thing to do. I think it's time to finish up your shopping and move on, brother. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, we care about the environment. You two just can't stay away, huh? Unfortunately. We're looking for Tessa again. Well, she took off about half an hour ago. Sorry. Is Tom busy? He's been in the office all morning, so who knows? But it's Tom, so it's probably safe to interrupt him. Hmm. Do you know if Tessa's gonna be back soon? I don't know if she's even coming back. No one tells me anything. Bum bum. Oh, Fanti. All right. I thought you were working at the diner today. No, I switched just because I wanted to get some sleep. But it turns out I was also scheduled to work at the store today. Michael, Michael, how do you always end up double booked? Because I'm too much of a badass. Coming at us like a Terminator. You're gonna work yourself to death, you know. Yeah, well, I can't really turn the money down. 
A security deposit is gonna be a bitch. Oh, on that subject, we've got someone coming to check out the house in two days. Oh, yeah? Yep, and apparently he'd pay in cash. Holy shit. That's what I like to hear. Uh huh. The thirst, Allison, the thirst. Stripes candy? Never heard of it. Yeah, stories. Let's take a look. Let's read Le Mousse. Because we read The Ice King, but. We have the frog we have not discovered yet. The princess makes new friends. The bear's big paws. That was a good one. The moon hag. The moon hag. Who's the moon hag? Uh, the goblin's trick. The mad hunter. Oh my god, I'm like so tempted to read that and get some clues or something. Uh, the goblins earn their voice. Goblins save an old beaver. The moose teaches the goblins. Did we read this one? I don't think we did. <clears throat> right? I don't think we read any moose ones. Let's get some water. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, the crafty goblins were hungry. This wasn't unusual. The goblins were always hungry, but today they were particularly hungry. Oh my god, is this why he taught us how to fish? Because we were literally starving. They opened the wise princess's cupboards to look for a snack. But all she had was a small pile of nuts and berries and one strip of dried fish. The goblins grabbed it all and gobbled it up, but they were still hungry. They went out into the woods to look for more to eat. First they dropped by the small pond. The big frog was asleep and beside the pond was a pile of insects she had caught for her eating after she woke up. The goblins crept up to the pile, careful not to wake the big frog. As they got close, she ribbited loudly and they froze, but the big frog kept sleeping. So they grabbed up the pile of insects and gobbled it up. But they were so hungry. As they crept back into the woods, they found the stalwart. 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 This word's annoying me. Hang on. Stalwart. 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 Doesn't sound right. Stalwart. 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 That's the British pronunciation. Stalwart. 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 Maybe that's why it's confusing me. Okay. Ah! I was reading. Uh, the moose. And said, did you just steal the big frog's food? The goblins tried not to look guilty, but failed. Uh, she said we could have them. Oh, really? Asked the moose. Let's ask her. So moose woke up Big Frog and asked, Did you say the goblins could have your food? The Big Frog looked at the goblins, who she knew were always hungry, and nodded. Uh, yes, I did. Aw, frog. Really? Asked the moose, surprised. Frog nodded and moose sighed. All right, then. And he had to let the goblins go. Their next stop was the river. They watched as Old Bear swiped at leaping salmon, catching it deftly in his large paws. He lay it out upon a rock and left it to dry, lumbering into the woods to seek out some berries. The crafty goblins crept up to the rock, carefully in case Old Bear returned. They reached the rocks, grabbed the salmon, and gobbled a tap, but they were still hungry. As they crept back into the woods, the stalwart moose was once again waiting for them. Uh, is you going to tell me- oh wait, <clears throat> are you going to tell me Old Bear said you could have that? Yes, replied the goblins. Old Bear ambled up at that moment and Moose asked him, Did you leave that fish for the goblins? Old Bear looked at the goblins, who he knew were always hungry, and he nodded. I did, he said. Really? asked the Moose. Really, said Old Bear. After Moose left, Old Bear said to the goblins, be sure to tell the princess I was kind to you. I'll simp, 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 and don't steal my fish again. The goblins, still hungry, went out looking for one more meal. They crept up to Mangy Muskrat's lodge and began to climb inside when they were dragged right back out. The stalwart moose dangled them by the seats of their pants and said, Now I know Mangy Muskrat didn't tell you could eat his food because he blames you for his coat being ruined. Besides, he barely has enough for himself, and he doesn't share with anyone. The goblins began to protest, but he shook his head. He set the goblins down and said, Come with me. The goblins followed the stalwart moose to a part of the river where it ran slow enough for them to walk into safely. 
He gave them a fishing line and said, I'm going to teach you to fish. So when you are hungry, you don't need to steal from the animals of the forest. It will be hard work, but it will be honest. The crafty goblins were not against working hard. They were just hungry. And so they listened to Moose. And they soon pulled a wriggling fish out of the river. Fish. And they ate them up. And finally, they were no longer hungry. And that is how the Moose teach the crafty goblin to fish. So that's the story of Eddie teaching them how to fish, which we saw in a flashback right at the beginning, didn't we? And I think that's the only moose story. Though the moose may well appear in some of these other tales, it's the only one. Should we read the Mad Hunter one just to like maybe get a glimpse, get a clue? We did see it earlier, right? Let's do it. Oh, that's a great picture. Look at that. That's so cool. That would make like a really nice um, avatar, like a profile pic. Once upon a time, in a castle just beyond the ancient and deep forest, the Mad Hunter was punished by the Gold Lady for failing to return with the Wise Princess. Already interesting for your failure, said the Gold For your failure, said the Gold Lady. I will take your left hand. You will return to the ancient and deep forest and hunt the Wise Princess. And if you can bring her back, I will return your hand to you. Fail again, and I will take your right hand. The Mad Hunter could hunt with just his right hand, but if he lost both his hands, he would never be able to hunt again, and would no longer be a Mad Hunter, only a Mad m Morph Man. So the Mad Hunter returned to the ancient and deep forest, searching with his piercing eye for the wise princess. The crafty goblins were out searching for mischief when they saw the Mad Hunter on the prowl. Uh, cannot find, let him find princess, said goblins, and they devised a plan. It was wash day, and the princess had hung her beautiful gown out to dry. They stole it from the lion and stuffed it full of straw, and returned it to where the mad hunter was scouring the paths of the forest. As the mad hunter turned down the path, he would have led him to the big wooden house. The goblins danced the straw princess in and out of view in the opposite direction. The ruse worked. The hunter fixed his piercing eye on them and followed. Through the day and into the night, they led him away from the true princess... As night fell, the crafty goblins realized the error in their plan. The mad hunter was now hunting them. If he caught them, he would not be kind, so they put their heads together and came up with a plan. It did not take them long to realize where they should go. They led the mad hunter to the edge of the deep and icy lake, and when he came into view, they weighed the fake princess down with stones, and they dropped her into the frigid water careful not to plunge into the depths themselves, lest the moon hag take her revenge. The Mad Hunter removed his clothing and dove in after the fake princess. He followed the shape, I mean, into the water, hello. He followed the shape of the sinking princess deep into chilly water down below where the ice covered the lake's surface. Finally, he caught her, but when he spun her towards him, he realized she had no head and that her body was stuffed with straw. And then he felt a slippery fin brush his shoulder as the moon hag loomed overhead. The next morning, the princess went to retrieve her gown from the clothing line and found that it was gone. She immediately suspected the goblins of mischief and called, Goblins, did you take my gown? The goblins emerged from their cave and nodded sadly. Now what will I wear? asked the princess, sad and angry that she had lost her only dress. Uh, let us explain, said the goblins. So they told the princess the story of the mad hunter, and then they produced his clothing, which was a bit large for the princess but much warmer than her beautiful gown. She immediately forgave them. Thank you, my friends, for rescuing me and for this clothing which will keep me much warmer in the winter than my beautiful gown. The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag, but she did not kill him, because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful. A servant. Lo, he plotted the day he would emerge and once again hunt the princess and earn back his left hand. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the princess from the Mad Hunter. <laughs> Interesting. Kick the door open. Come in. Storm. What do you mean? We've got enough signatures. 
It should have at least been enough to stall construction while we figure out our next move. Well, why don't we schedule a meeting with the Alaska Wildlife Foundation? Try to get their support. Look, Harold, I have to go. We can pick this up at the meeting. I, I should be on my way over soon. Hey, I hope this isn't a bad time, but is Tessa around today? She had to step out for a family matter. This wouldn't be something I could help with, would it? Yeah, maybe, actually. Uh, we were over at the police station and we took a look at Marianne's case file. <clears throat> okay. A lot of the fixed camera angles always frame us on opposite sides, just like the cover of the game. Like I can't move beyond that with us framed left and right. Uh, hmm, let's start here. Why did Tessa come to the police station that night? She was looking for you two. To make sure you were okay. When she heard what happened, she was a mess. How exactly did she like, hear There's always about a lot so of fast. space between us with what's going who on. Called, but you know how it is. No news travels faster than a secret. Everyone knew five minutes after Brown was on his way out. Tessa reported Marianne to social services. Did you know? Vaguely. But I didn't get involved. I, I didn't think I really had anything to add. Thanks, Tom. You never thought to mention it? Well, no. I'm not sure how a thing like that would have come up. And I didn't want to rub salt in any wounds. Huh. How about when we were in the store yesterday asking about it point blank? That was between you and Tessa. I try to stay out of other people's affairs. <laughs> what a useless egg of a man. Okay. Thank you. Look, I'm sorry if you felt... resistance from people around here. To put it mildly. Allison, you know this better than anybody. But your mother's death left a scar on this community. Now, I won't claim oh, we went through anything close to what you did, but it was a cruel reminder of the limits of trust. Well, if we want to get past the limits of trust, we all need to face what happened, which means being completely honest about it. We all want to find peace, kids. It's just harder for some people to talk about the past. Now, you let me know if you have any Listen, other Listen, I think if okay? we can manage it, you guys can manage it, let's be honest. Hey. Yes? You said I should remind you not to be late for your meeting, so... Don't be late. Is this guy, he's running for yep. mayor. Is he the yep. current I'll mayor? I'll be on my way in a minute. Or is he just uh, running for mayor? So, kids, was there uh, anything else you two wanted to talk to me about? Did you ever hear any rumors about our mother? Like... Who her father might have been? Oh, damn. Um, not exactly a rumor Daddy. monger. Your mother was close to a few men. Don't but say it like that. were your father, I couldn't say. A few? How dare you, Tom. But look, I... Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm sorry. I really have to go. Uh, Michael! Uh, could you finish up the storage room and then I feel like just, that's the first uh, mention up? of yeah, sure thing, boss man. Papa, though. See you later. <laughs> the body count. You two want to help a brother out? Spend the afternoon here working for free? Uh. Why not? Why would we, we agree to this? Came here to talk to Tessa, and kind of she's busy. not here. Uh, she she's at the cemetery, uh, visiting her parents. Oh. Whoops. Hey, tell you what. Why don't you guys help me close the store, and then we can drive over together. I've been meaning to pay my uncle a visit. Can't we just wait for her to come back here? I, I'm not really excited about going there. Come on, guys. We don't have to visit her grave. Let's go jump I'm gonna start Tessa in the store whilst there. she's visiting her parents' Tyler's grave. Really it's perfect. Sure just give me a sec. We interrupted a victim statement to talk to Uncle Eddie. Interrupt him at work. Let's go to the cemetery. Let's do it. Just come up right behind her as she's like weeping, you know? Pat her on the shoulder. Can we have a word? We just found out that you're a our mother and are probably responsible for her death. Where'd that question you about her father come from? Bench. 
I've just been thinking about who he might be. And if he knows anything that could help us figure this shit out. Why? He wasn't a part of our lives. Besides, Marianne always said we never had a father. Well, her name might have been Mary, but I don't think she was a likely candidate for Immaculate Conception. Ayo. Uh, hey, so you look less than thrilled with the plan. Yeah, like I said, I am not stoked to be going to the cemetery. What's up? I need your opinion on this masterpiece. <laughs> Is that supposed to be me? Yeah, come on, look at the hair. Nailed it, right? Honestly, it's beautiful. Hey, don't make fun of me. I'm not. Oh, well, maybe a little bit, but I like it. For real. Well, it helps to have a good model. So this is what you're up to while I was out there doing your work? What can I say? I'm a multitasker. Hey, multitasker? I think you made a mistake here. Total amount should be 36. Oh. How dare you, sir? What? <laughs> I just don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah, you're right. You know, I'm off Draw my game me today. like one of your French girls. Yeah. All right. Anything else you wanted me to check? Yep. One last thing, and then we should be free from this purgatory. Hit what? me. Can you count how counting. many plushies uh, we have in that box over there? Okay. I do not like counting. Sam, I am Python esque. Thank you so much for 100 biddies. So. Can you count them, chat? It's time to count. Boom, 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 boom. Everyone watching at home, play along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many did you get? Ten's not an option, so it must be eleven. Uh, you've got about eleven left in that box. Did I get it wrong? Michael? <gasps> the guy, the guy, the guy! Ow. Hey, sorry. Oh. It was just too tempting. <laughs> Dick. I thought the crazy hunting old man had, like, come Lesson in and Lesson number him one up. in the ancient art of inventory. Never let your guard down. <laughs> You have no idea what you just started. First one with three confirmed hits wins. Cool. Oh god. Boom! <laughs> gotcha. Cover shooter. Go. Gears of War style. Eh. Yeah. Look at you. Look at you. Boom. One more hit and you're out. Prepare to feel my wrath. <laughs> God, you're corny. How about oh, you? come on. Is that all you got, Ronan? I hit you twice. Ugh, I suck at this. I'd crush you if we were fishing, though. We'll have to go out to the buzzard hole to test that out. Oh, my God. So, is this a typical work day for you? Nah, I usually don't have such good-looking company back here. Peak, I dare you. I'm, did you just call me good-looking? Oh, so I'm good-looking company, huh? Yeah, well, don't let it get to your head. I'm still mm. destroying you. I mean, you're literally not. I'm too nil up. <laughs> gotcha. Oh my god, are these little toms? <laughs> these little mare dolls? Oh, <laughs> oh I just Man, realized. you're good. <laughs> I told you not to doubt the golden eye. Little legs. Well, we'll never make that mistake again. Okay. I, I need to finish this inventory thing real quick. Your sister's probably done already. Here. Let's hit the bitch's grotto. The what? Fancy name for the couch where Allison and I sit during breaks. Ah, alright. Cool. Let me see what you've done with the place. What is Allison even doing during this? Like, we were supposed to go to... Oh, no, we're closing up, aren't we? And then we're going. What have we got in here? Let's have some drinks. Oh, hey, see that container? Pizza. That's for you. Huh? It's the trout I caught yesterday at the buzzard hole. Grilled it up with my world-renowned marinade. Mm. 
Oh, wow. Uh, thank you. World-renowned marinade, huh? What's in it? A magician never reveals his secrets. Okay, so am I taking it, or am I just going to leave it in there? Like, thanks, no thanks. Leave the trout in there for later, I guess. I'm surprised Tessa let you hang this up. Yeah, she hates it. But as long as I don't promote my lifestyle in front of the customers, she doesn't say anything. It says, Man, Juno Coalition for Equality Potluck. These people. <laughs> Here's the thing, I don't. Opening the minds of this town will be a full-time fucking bing, bing. job. And Kiss, emotional labor smooth, pays shit. Pash, mac on, play tonsil hockey, please. Mac. Get macked. Oh, this question. Hey, I hope this isn't too personal, but you ever been with anyone in Delos Crossing? Oh, I thought we meant I literally in the back room. I guy in high school for a minute, but we had to keep it quiet. I've been with a few other people. I thought we were going to be like, that shit's tricky out here. On this and What couch? about you? You ever been with a guy? I mean, assuming you're into guys, which <laughs> I guess I kind of did. But I'm boom. Thank you, Python S. 100 biddies. Um, still figuring my shit out, or did I never meet the right person? Hmm, running out of time. Let's stay with still figuring things out. I'm still figuring my shit out. I'm not sure if I'm made to be with anyone. And just you know? come back out yeah, into the wide world, and I. And don't ever feel like you have to rush into anything. Yeah, I don't. But thank you. Do you ever get lonely in Delos Crossing? Yeah, sometimes. That's why I'm always in Juno working with the JCE, meeting new people. I gotta make my shit happen for me, because no one else will. Right. I like I these laces. Anyway. And just... oh. I'm done. No. I wanna look at things. We're not done. Is this Chief Brown? Yeah. Are you guys related or? Nah, but same clan. Which clan? Octopus clan. Raven Moity. Huh. Badass. So, you close with everybody in the clan? Yeah, we're pretty tight-knit. I mean, we're all kind of spread out, so I don't know everyone that well, but they're still family. I was really close to my Uncle William until he passed. He's the one whose grave I want to visit. Oh, yeah. Of course. Is this Chief Brown? Ask the other question. So, what's your take on him? He's a pretty alright guy. All things considered? All things considered? Like, with him being a cop and all, I mean, it, it's good to see someone from the clan getting shit done. And he really cares about the community. We need someone like him on top. Uh, bear. So, you think Tom's got the chops to be the mayor of Delos Crossing? No. Uh, I don't know. The guy's sweet and not entirely incompetent. But it doesn't really matter. Vote for him to vote for Tessa. She'd be the one running the show. Oh. Oh. So I take it you're not Tessa's biggest fan? Yeah, you know, every time I put up flyers for queer events, she accidentally covers them. <sighs> Jesus, that's fucked. Oh, Jesus has nothing to do with that, trust me. Being religious doesn't mean you gotta weaponize your religion against other people. That's a choice. Yeah. I hear you. So I take it. Oh wait, did I already ask this? Fan? I think that's the one I yeah, just clicked. Yeah, you know, every time oh, I put up whoops. flyers or queer events, she accidentally covers them. Oh wait, this is brand new information. No way. Have you ever confronted her about it? Nah. I just keep my head down and count the days until Juno. Man, that has to be rough. It is, but out here, just surviving is a form of protest. You're pretty all right. <sighs> not too bad yourself, son. <laughs> but you're not too bad yourself. I try not to be. Especially around guys I'm trying to impress. Oh. So I wasn't blowing smoke when I said you should move to Juno with us. I know. I... I've got a community there. It could be yours too. Hmm. Fitting in. There's a concept. Ye you have no idea how life-saving a chosen family can be. Mm-hmm. 
pull me out of the dark more times than I can count. I hear you. Hey, can I ask you a question? Of course. Shoot. Why do you care so much if I move to Juno? <laughs> Look, like I said, I, I want to get to know you. Because I'm just that fascinating, huh? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. You might be one of a kind, Tyler Ronan. Okay, well, we've spoken like once, so you're an absolute soup. We'll allow it. You're swell or we're not looking for the same thing. I mean... I love romance in games. I feel like, honestly, I feel like Tyler probably wants to take it a little bit slow. Just came out going through a lot. Feel like you're, uh, you know, coming on a little bit strong, Michael, to be honest. But we like the romance. Well, golly gee, Michael. I think you're swell too. You're the cat's pajamas. <laughs> Shut up. I've got way better compliments than that but I can't open with my best, right? It's cool. So, I'll get more of those if I get to know you better? For sure. If that's something you'd be interested in. I might be. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, let's hey. leave it I've open. been standing at that counter for an hour waiting for you two dum-dums oh, to come hi. back. Oh, hi. Forgot you existed. Are you guys ready to go? Look at that face, mm -hmm. that scowl. I think we've done about as much damage as we can back here. Yeah. Ugh. I feel like that could be another potential, um, you know, ending next week. In next week's episode, it could be, do we move to Juno? Do we stay here with uh, Sis? You know, that's another potential future for Tyler here, isn't it? An option. Here we are. Because I really feel like there was elements of them maybe not wanting to sell the house. Thanks for letting me hit you right together. over. I don't know. No problem. You sure we can't drive you back? Nah. You're like stretching my legs. It isn't far. Yeah, do you think she anyway, has a crush on him? can't put the wind in a bottle. <laughs> All right. Tessa should be at her parents' grave. Not far from the entrance. <laughs> Look for a big crooked tree. You can't miss it. I'm going to go check in with my uncle. Good luck. For real. All right, time to go and upset an old lady. You look spooked. I've well, never been a big fan it. of cemeteries, especially after, you know. I promise after this, we can chill at the house. Cool? Oh, God, I thought that was a real deer. Here's the crooked tree, but no Tessa. Let's check around for her parents' grave, just to make sure this is the right spot. You think it's possible Michael remembered it wrong? Well, I've done inventory with him before, so... Wait, is this the one we called Big Crookedy? The exact one. Why didn't we call it Gnarl's Branchy? Total missed opportunity. <laughs> because we weren't hip to basketball back then? Or CeeLo Green? Damn. I remember it going all the way up to the clouds. Everything does when you're four feet tall. Mm -hmm. This might take a while. Phillips. This looks fresh. De Leon. That's the one. Don't tell me we missed her. I'm sorry, guided by Hello, an eagle? Mr. Eagle? Kids. It's time. Flashbacks. You really have to go, Eddie? You can hold my hand if you want. I can walk fine on my own. It'll be quick, okay? Then we'll get something to eat. The day of the funeral. I barely remember him. That's probably for the best. I don't think either of us are exactly eager to relive what went on behind that gate. So... I know oh, I said we didn't have to visit her grave. 
but it feels like the right thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Dig it up. Dig it up. Check for a body. Dig it up. Too, what? Too much? Oh. Oh no, this is uh, Sam. Sam's his name, yeah? When didn't Michael's uncle die? Oh, Last Michael. Year. Oh my god, who's Sam? It was really hard on him. He's still feeling it. Long time no see. Do you want some company? Come on over. Make yourself wow. comfortable. Relax. <laughs> oh, the bear is Sam. That's right. So, how are you, um, holding up? Is this a bad time? With you? Never. Don't mind me. I'm not really here. Hey, I get to see your ugly mug almost every wow. day. You're old news, lady. Wow. You wound me. Deeply. <laughs> so, can I help you guys out somehow? Uh, Allison, please. I'm, I'm not going. Allison, come back. <sighs> yeah. Any hope that this would be easier than last time? Totally gone. At least this time, no one's sending me away. I'm holding you to that. Afterwards. You and I had a moment over there by the totem, right? I wonder if we could see that. Doesn't hurt to check. Focus. Focus your mind. I won't let them take you away. I'm gonna tell them the truth. You swore, Allison. I'm gonna be okay. Please, don't worry about me. I know I'm supposed to get over this brown thing, but... I really wish you'd been able to come visit that much. Yeah, me too, but... Look, I didn't make any promises that day. You did. Watch. Oh, it's a... A memory... think you killed her. It's not fair. I'll be okay. You have to take care of yourself now. See? It's possible, but I don't think so. Well, I know so. Thinking about it got me through the rest of the day. I believe her. Choo I'll be back soon, all right? Choose Allison's memory. Tyler promised to return. Choose but Tyler's I'm gonna come memory. See you every Allison we'll promised talk to visit. Voice every day. But I'm gonna come see you every week. And we'll talk with our voice every day. We'll be back soon, alright? From seeing how Tyler was after like it happened, how quickly he was like, uh, you know, we gotta fix this, you know, I'm gonna take care of you, that's what brothers do. I'm gonna say that this is the truth. I'll be back soon, all right? Promise. Chief Brown's gonna take care of you. We'll be okay. You'll see. Kids. I'm sorry it took me so long to come back. I got so caught up in everything that... You really don't have to explain. I understand what you were going through now. Are you ever gonna let me finish my sentences? <laughs> Maybe someday. But not today. <laughs> this spot's familiar. She lost one of her only friends. She was always saying how she never would have found a place in Delos Crossing without Carol. You think her death kicked off Marianne's, you know? It definitely didn't help, but no. It was years later. You think Snowball still lives in there? Snowy Owls only tend to live about 10 years. Oh, 
Rest in peace, Snowball. That sound effect, the plane going overhead that it does every so often, legit sounds like it's uh, in the real world because it just like swamps everything. Is that her? What the hell was going on with you? What? Broke? <laughs> Why didn't you say anything? We were your goblins. <laughs> you didn't have to do it all alone. Did she come from? Kids. I, uh, I. I wasn't expecting to see. What are you. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Feeling a little guilty, maybe? Oh. Uh, Goblin. When we pass on, our graves are all anyone has to remember us by. Letting hers just fall apart would be true. cruel. <laughs> I'm not a cruel person. It's not true, Tessa. Cruel enough to call social services on our mother. I, I, I wanted to protect you. Marianne was getting worse all the time. I was afraid that if things kept going the way they were, then one day we were going to end up dead. Look, I'm sorry I didn't tell you the whole story back in the store, but I didn't want you to, to- Enough with the excuses. What the hell happened to her? Why'd you turn your back on us? Your mom was always just barely getting by, and over the years she burned a lot of goodwill. It got so bad, no one was willing to hire her, and the stress of that, well, it, it took its toll. I tried to help, but she pushed me away. She pushed us all away. In the end, she isolated herself from everyone. She was alone and out of options. She had us, until you threatened to have us taken away. I couldn't let her drag you down with her. She had you stealing for God's sake. Your mother never wanted to be a part of this community. Ooh. She always thought she was better than the rest oh. of us. A spoiled little girl playing fairy princess in the woods. Slapper. If she just settled down with someone instead of Slapper. running around with married oh. men, well... Just ask Sam Kansky how much better that would have been for everyone. Wait, what? Smack this. I... Oh, God. What happened between them? I, I wasn't thinking. Please, just forget I said anything. Tessa. All I know is whatever went on, Laura left Sam over it. But I shouldn't have said anything about that. I promised I wouldn't. I'm sorry. You got a kids. big mouth, you pelican. Um, honestly, doesn't seem remorseful at all. The way she just spoke to us while standing on our mother's grave. Get out of here. I get that Marianne wouldn't let you help her. But there had to be a better way to deal with it. 
Especially if she was having some kind of crisis. Yes, you're right. There were other things I could have done. Better things. I know I've made mistakes. All I can do now is say that I'm sorry. If I'm I could give you back sorry, your mother, like literally 30 I seconds ago, you were saying she thought she was better than everyone, like a little princess. Yours, Tyler. But if there's a place for me in your lives, I'd like to be there. Hey. I have to know something first. Are you good with who I am? I've been thinking about that since you came home. I believe that my life is better for having lived it by God's word. But I also believe we don't always understand what he's saying to us. It's going to make me choose. I pray for guidance. And seeing you standing here in front of me, such a strong and thoughtful young man, I think I have his answer. Mm. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Tessa, I know the last couple of days have been hated. I'm up for a fresh start if you are, but it's not really up to me. Dialogue. What do you think, guys? I'm done losing people or I can't forgive you. <laughs> I feel like we're going to get this with everyone, aren't we? We had this with uh, Eddie earlier. You know, I feel like we should choose the path of being done losing people, honestly. With this whole sort of chapter so far being about coming to terms with stuff. Confronting issues. Finding a way forward. If we can let Eddie back into our lives as almost like an, a father figure this late. Old Uncle Ed. You know. It doesn't mean we, have, doesn't mean we agree with her and stuff that she's done. But um, I feel like through some of those stories, she probably was there for us too. Feeding us food. Making sure we were okay. I don't like the way she just spoke to us, but then she seemed to quickly catch herself. She's just a flawed person, as we all are. You know? We have our flaws. And also, I feel like it's healthier for Tyler. You know? Rather than saying, I can't forgive you, and then holding on to that, whether we move to Juno or whatever, or stay in the town, it being a thing. Sometimes it's just easy to be like, you know what? I might not agree with what you did. And doesn't mean I like it, but I'm just gonna, you know? I'm done losing people. And if we can't let people it grow... It is what it is. Then what the hell kind of chance do we have? Thank you. Both of you. Kids, I never knew your mother's whole story, but it was obviously very painful. She always said you two were the only good luck she'd ever had. I'm going to try harder to forgive her. I hope you can as well. If you two are in town tomorrow, come by the cafe. Lunch is on me. They're gonna be coconut cake on the menu? You know, I Forgive think there for just what? might be. I'll see you two tomorrow then. We'll be there. What are you forgiving her for? Stealing detergent? Forgive yourself, lady. That was something, huh? Yeah, it was. I had pretty much given up on her, but I guess sometimes people change. I know. I feel like a total ass right now. Also, her saying that she accepted us as who we were was the the deal sealer, I think. Looks like you could use a nap. Oh, a I nap? was I was thinking after today, I'm ready it's to hide. Important. Give me Maybe more we time. could find the old bear's ice cave for you. Thinking about my dialogue. I do this. I don't need a nap. You want to sit down for a bit? Yeah, go on then. Not because I need a nap, though. Just because I want to sit. This looks nice. Not a bad view, right? Yeah. I get now why they put cemeteries in nice spots. Takes a little bit of the sting off. Well, this reunion's kind of gone off the rails, huh? Oh. You mean how we kind of turned Delos Crossing upside down and shook out all its nasty secrets? 
Yeah, but at least now we know what really happened. I can't thank you enough, by the way. Hey, brothers and sisters, right? But it's been way more brothers and sisters. I wish I played this with a controller so we could Which is why nice. I'm trying to say thank you. You really don't have to. You Adding saved sweeps. my life, Allison. With mouse. Only for you to end up locked up in fireweed for the rest of your childhood. Wait, are you still blaming yourself for that? Don't. It was my choice. It's just... I stole your life, Tyler. And then I totally wasted it. That's not true. You're on your way to Denali. Michael's gonna be a famous chef. And, and what am I doing? Nothing. Nothing. You needed time. You little murderer. You were just dealing with what happened the way that you needed to, alright? As soon as we figure this shit out, we're gonna sell the house. And you're gonna go to Juno. You're gonna kick ass. You make it sound so easy. No. We never had a shot at easy. But we always pull through. Hell right? yeah. Yeah. You're right. Hey. Wherever Ranger Tyler ends up next, he better come down from the hills to visit us city folk every now and then. Hug. You hear? For sure. Hug button. And anyway, it's not gonna be for a while. We've got time. Oh yeah, of course. We do. So I guess we know the story now, huh? Not really. Marianne was done with Delos, and Delos was done with her. Maybe she was too proud, but... She worked so hard for so long, and when she reached the end of her rope, no one was there to help her. Not even Tessa. Or Eddie. And when she heard social services was coming, she... She... Gave up. But killed her kids? Really? I don't know if that was the intention. I think it was... She was going to be Still like she was trying to like protect us or something missing. from them coming. Right. Or somebody. Could be the dad, something like that. She got wind of the dad coming. You're never going to understand what was going through her mind. I'll bet even she I think she we're going to get a lot of answers from Sam as well. And we still have the frog to meet. It's probably always going to feel that way. No, it ain't. Because there's a whole other chapter. We're going to get some answers. That better not be the end. There we go. Ooh, I'm going to fall asleep the second I hit the couch. You better rally. We still have to do some cleaning before bed. This could be the ending, though. Uh, do we have to? Hey, whoever packs the most gets the big couch tonight. Allison. Oh, shit. I'll get the fire extinguisher. Sam? Someone else. Oh, dang. Oh, shit. That's like the hunter outfit. Tyler! I don't think that's Sam. I'm in Tyler, jump. are you alright? Allison. Barn. Stay there. I got it. Damn, what was that? Uh, there, there was a, a guy. He smashed me in the face with the door. I think that was what a lady. Guy? What did he look like? I'm not sure. I couldn't see straight, and, and he was all in black. God. Why would someone try to burn down our barn? Something about the way they moved. I don't know. But I'm going to find out. For me? For me? Oh yeah, you guys all jumped. I screamed out loud uh, the noise you made. Did I make a noise? What noise did I make? I thought I jumped silently. Man, that made you guys jump really hard. We really need to do a horror stream soon. I might have found something. That'd be fun. Really get everyone jumping then. 
Is that a box under the barn? Yeah. What the hell? I think this is where the fire started. So he was trying to burn whatever's inside? We should check it out. I'm gonna need to remove a few more planks to get to it. Hmm. Where could we possibly find a tool to do that? Turn this place upside down. So they were trying to burn whatever's under here. All right, tools. He went looking under the rug. This gas can was already here this morning. He didn't bring it with him. Asshole even dumped the drawers. What's this? Huh. At least you were spared. Who dis? Who dis? Who dis? The moon hag. Uh, that's what it's gonna be, isn't it? She is the moon hag. Oh, look at her. The moon hag is an old and powerful witch. She lures her innocent victims deep beneath the ice and traps them there forever. The ice. Hmm. Read the Moon Hag story. Let's do it now, just in case this is the very end. Um, moon Hag, Moon Hag. We have the Moon Hag loses her name is the one story. Yeah. Oh my God, look at her. Ah, <laughs> uh, Detective Gobbo has magnifying glass. Once upon a time, in a deep and cold lake in an ancient forest, there lived an old seal who was powerful witch in disguise. She was mean and cruel and liked nothing more than to swim in the deepest part of the lake where the light was dim under the ice, admiring the corpses of the many victims that she had tricked into the water over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this could be like, this could be Sam's wife or something. She was so hateful, or, or mother I'm thinking, or something, I don't know. She was so hateful. Like Mary's mother, I mean. She was so hateful that only the cold water of the lake could keep her cool. Her most prized possession was a tin mirror sold to her by the secret keeper, and she kept it in a chest at the bottom of the lake. It was no ordinary mirror. If you looked in it, you would see a reflection of who you truly desired to be. And for one hour, the mirror granted you the power to appear as that person. Whenever a boat or an unwise traveler approached the edge of the lake, the old witch used the mirror to appear as a beautiful woman that she always wished to be, and with this disguise she lured unfortunate sailors or wanderers into the deep and cold water. Siren. There the old seal forced the victim to become her servant, and when she was done with them they joined her collection of corpses in the deepest part of the lake. One day when the old seal swam down to her den under the lake, she discovered that someone had stolen her mirror. The chest where she kept her most prized possession had been forced open, and now it was empty. Who would have committed such a crime? Who had dared to deprive her of her only treasure? The old seal went mad, and her anger heated the water of the lake around her. For a time, everyone was happy with the temperature change, for the weather suddenly became sweeter and the air warmer, but after a few weeks, things started to get ugly. First, the fish began to die off, for they could not live in hot water. Then the glaciers began to melt, and the water of the lake rose and spilled out, flooding the forest and the meadows. And finally, the weather grew so hot that even the Ice King himself was awakened from his long sleep and decided to see what was going on. In the deepest part of the lake, he found the mad witch steaming among the corpse, her victims. Corpses, the corpses, her victims. Steaming among the corpses, her victims. That doesn't make sense. So angry that the lake was about to boil. It only took a few minutes for the Ice King to understand what had happened and demand the thieves present themselves before him. The thieves had no choice but to appear, for no one dared disobey the Ice King. The crafty goblins presented themselves, mirror in hand. Why did you steal the mirror? asked the king. Uh, we was curious and we wanted to see what we wanted to be. Apologized the goblins. Uh, stupid thing broke. We look same. That does not mean it did not work, smiled the ice king. Now apologize and give the mirror to me, for it is too powerful to be used by thieves or a mean old hag. The goblins apologized and gave the mirror to the ice king, but the old seal was still angry. 
And what about me? She asked. I've been deprived of my treasure and I demand a compensation. The Ice King frowned as he spoke again. Old hag, you are mean and cruel, but I concede you have been wronged. For now you will be allowed to leave the lake and walk the earth as the hag you really are. Hag, you hag, but only when the moon is full. Hag, and you goblins, you had better stay away from the lake, for I won't protect you from the moon. Hag's wraith. Wrath. Ruined it. And this is how the two goblins forced the moon hag to change her name. Hag. I guess we know how he made the hole. Interesting. Some of the stuff was really obvious, and now I'm like, what's the mirror? Seeing who they really want to be, like when they grow up, what could that mean? What could that be representative of? Yeah, curiouser and curiouser. I love that it's not all straightforward and we have to uncover more stuff to Step get back. an idea. I'll be fine. It's gonna be. Well, I only know one person who bothered I. to decorate a storage box like Gaze. this. Marianne. His Let's gazing eye. Right? Three digits. Any ideas? Mm. Marianne was never really a numbers kind of person. Three digits. Hmm. Three digits. Finding no. anything? Just give me a sec. We wrote a shit ton of stories. <sighs> Three digits. Have we seen any numbers in the stories today? I don't think I recall any. Look at that, the Mad Hunter getting his hand back. Hmm. There's a beaver as well. What story do we think it could be? Could be in the Mad Hunter, couldn't it? The final one. Let's read that one and see what happens, I guess. Because that's the only one that, like, that's his eye, isn't it? Or maybe, it, actually, hang on. The gobl goblins earn their voice. There we go. That's the same symbol that's on there. That's the same symbol. Wait. Look. It's the same symbol. I just had that, well, let's see if we can find any numbers. Once upon a time in the deep and ancient forest, the craft of uh, goblins spied on the secret keeper as she made her rounds, gathering up secrets that the animals of the forest had for sale. The gossip. How? How? said the first goblin. Does she get the secrets? Does suppose she peer open their heads? Let's find out, said the second. And so the goblins watched the secret keeper. They watched her until the stalwart moose came to her, head hanging low. It was my fault. I chose the uneven trail. I can't bear to remember. The secret keeper nodded and gazed into stalwart moose's eyes. Though the goblins couldn't hear anything, they knew she was speaking to the moose, for the secret keeper spoke in people's minds with the gift of the voice. After a few minutes, the stalwart moose blinked. I feel lighter, said moose. Did I just give you something? The secret keeper nodded, handing him a coin. Stalwart Moose nodded and plodded along down the trail and spied the goblins hiding in the woods. He narrowed his eyes, for he knew the goblins were often up to mischief. The two goblins whistled innocently and the moose was forced to carry on, because they were not doing anything obviously bad. I need to know what secret was, said one of the goblins. Uh, let's go by that, said the goblins. The goblins approached the secret keeper before she could stow away the moose's secret. We want to buy moose's secret. What do you have to trade? asked the secret keeper, her voice filling their minds. The goblins produced a silver-handled hairbrush that they had stolen from the princess, and the secret keeper nodded. And that is how the goblins came to know that Moose's mate had tumbled down a cliffside to her death. Oh, bloody hell. The secret keeper moved on. The first of the goblins said, I want to know more. So the goblins followed the secret keeper, hoping to find where she hid the secrets. They followed her to the peak of a nearby ridge and watched as she stowed the rest of the day's secrets high in a cloud. When she had gone, they climbed a high spruce tree that disappeared into the misty sky. They reached out and just managed to dip their hands into the clouds. Their heads were filled with memories, and they snatched their hands back out. 
as if they had just thrust them in boiling water. Tears poured down their cheeks, and that was how the secret keeper found them, crying in the tree. You stole my secrets, seethed the secret keeper. Give them back. The crafty goblins stopped crying because they saw an opportunity. Um, what will you give us an exchange? I will give you back the silver-handled hairbrush offered the secret keeper. Uh, for so many secrets, Psst, you have to offer more than that. What if, said the secret keeper, I shared the gift of voice? The crafty goblins grew excited. Lass, that will do, do nice to lass. So the secret keeper shared the gift of the voice with the goblins, and immediately they found that they could hear one another's thoughts and feel each other's feelings. The crafty goblins gave back the secrets that they had taken and ran back to the big wooden house. There they found the princess preparing food. They tried to peer into her mind, but found it was blank. They tried to speak to her using only their minds, but she could not hear them. It seemed that the secret keeper was craftier than the crafty goblins, for she had only shared enough of her power to let the goblins use the gift of the voice with each other, and not with the hell forest. And that is how the goblins stole the gift of voice from the secret keeper, and why they could only use it with each other. It's a snappier ending, if you ask me. Um, good story. What could it mean? We have a zero, a three... the numbers anything on here a one is that a one only things that look like numbers to me and no mention of any numbers here that did it I think she didn't know how much of an ass he'd turn out to be. Dear Marianne, I need to see you again. I know how that sounds, and I don't want you to think I chase after all the new girls in Delos Crossing. I've always taken my vows seriously, but something changed when I met you. When we're together, I feel like I'm doing 80 down the highway with my lights off, and I never want to stop. I know it isn't right, and we both have a lot to lose, but I need to be with you again. I hope you feel the same. Heart symbol. P.S. I bought you a little something for next time. I can't wait to see how it looks on you. Uh, great. Okay, now the other one. Fuck. That's rough. Marianne, I'm sorry you're in this situation. This this guy tried to push Marianne to get an abortion. Don't spoil it! Even though she wanted to keep us. I'm reading it! What the hell? Marianne, I'm sorry you're in this situation. I know you feel you'd make a great mother, and I don't doubt you will someday, but right now we have to be sure we don't ruin three lives. My marriage hasn't been happy for some time, but she doesn't deserve this. Mostly I'm worried about you. People here talk, and I don't want you to have to go through that. I know money has been tight, but I'll just let... I'll do what I can to help you if... Help you do the right thing. Just let me know how much you need. Alright, I mean, wait until I read it and then I click off and then you can have your little comment. What the hell? That's everything. What the hell? Is it Sam? Oh. I don't know. Marianne hid a box under the barn. Box full of letters from our deadbeat dad. And a decade later, some guy comes along, trashes the barn, and tries to destroy the box. I know you Tessa let that thinking? slip, but I don't yep. think it is Sam. That guy had an affair with Marianne, and he just tried to torch the evidence. He must have heard we were clearing out the house. He was worried we'd find it. You know, I... I can't shake the feeling I've seen him here before. Um... I don't understand why they would, like, dig up like dig up a little bit they were trying to get to it maybe they panicked they couldn't get the floorboard up and then they were like I'm just gonna burn the whole thing down but if you burn it down and then the Can you, not you just nearly pushed me in the hole could have rolled my ankle burning the barn down would be more likely to reveal it because that box would survive you know there's, there's like a metal box like what an idiot whoever this person is honestly 
Did he really have to smash everything? He went looking under the rug? So, did Eddie teach you how to put out a fire? Nope. I taught myself. Then how the heck did they know that that was there? I'm just gonna throw out that that could have been Marianne in that outfit, honestly. Like, why would anyone else know that she buried secrets there? It makes no sense. Is that the start of a memory? So this one we ran away, so maybe now we're going to see the hunter revealed, like... Allison! Allison! Why are we seeing this? I don't know about you, but I haven't forgotten anything about that night. I would have said the same thing, but something felt different. I need to see the rest. But you know what happens down there. That's the thing. I'm not sure I do. All right. Oh look, is Let's this their prince of the person who just ran? This is where I tripped. Okay, so then we're gonna see they were over there, weren't they? This was the clip. The Mad Hunter. There. Wait, there was someone here that night in the woods? No. It was just... I, I saw... Who the hell did I actually see? Who is it? The Mad Hunter! What? No. That... That was the Mad Hunter. What? What are you talking about? That night... I thought I saw the Mad Hunter in the woods, but I guess it was just some asshole. Some asshole who just fucking stood there and watched while our mother chased me with a shotgun. Do you think it was the same guy? Maybe. I mean, it had to be him, right? They were wearing the same fishing gear. Yeah, unless everyone who wants to mess with us is coordinating outfits. And wait, he was here once before, wasn't he? A few days before Marianne died? Maybe? Hold on. Do you feel that? Fishing gear. Is that... Wait. Are we feeling... I'm feeling another memory. There's also something down there. Oh, I don't know which to do first. Let's look. The trail ends here. It looks like he jumped into the gully. Anyone up there. Escalante with the Prime resub four months. Thank you so much for the continued support. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Hey, are there footsteps on the other side? Yeah, that must be where he climbed out. Well, he's long gone. Okay, let's find this memory. I don't think that was it. Tyler, not there. Our mother fought with someone on the dock. About us. We need to know if it was the same guy. But what if it's not that memory? What if it's... I can't go through that again. We have to take that chance. But do we really? I mean, someone just tried to burn our barn down. Yeah, and that means we've got to be close to something. I'm not going on that dock. I don't think we should use that as bargaining, honestly. Just one more time, please. There's always just one more. Every time it seems like we're done with this, something new pops up. What if this is the only chance to figure out who our father is? Then we go on living our lives without him, just like we always have. Come on, we need to know the truth. For her. What if I don't want to know the truth, huh? Did you ever consider that? No. You just push and push and- You have to take responsibility for your part in Marianne's death. 
What? How... How... How can you say that to me? I didn't. But I, I did, right? Earlier, to Eddie. But I, I swear I didn't just say that to you. So we can't even trust our own voices now? God, I, I don't know. Allison. I'll do it. Let's go. <gasps> Memories. Remember. I just want to check I didn't miss anything there. I think maybe the twinkling was just getting me to come over here. I don't think I missed another memory. No, it seems to fade. Okay. Excuse, excuse me. Come on. Trouble focusing. Can do it. Oh my God. Come on, Allison. She's like fighting it. Ouch! Watch it! You're stepping on my foot. Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet. We don't want mom to catch us out of bed. Loving the colors on this scene. I told you, I told you that would happen. We almost had it though. That was us watching Marianne fight with that guy. Try to focus on him, all right? Don't think about anything else. I'll, I'll try. Come on, Allison, try. So you're here to make sure I've been keeping my mouth shut? I don't owe you anything. You've been a little all over the place lately. All over the place? I've just been trying to survive. If you want to make sure I don't get desperate, you could help us out. Lend me some money. What happened? Why did it stop? I can't, Tyler. But we were so damn close. I'm sorry, but I'm done. That's it? You're just giving up, just like that? You can't do this. We owe her. Marianne is gone, Tyler. And nothing we do is gonna change that. Don't go, please. You can't keep running from this alley, or it's only gonna get worse. I wanna know. Allison. Oh, I swear, was that the end? Ouch! Watch it! You're stepping on my foot! Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet! We don't want mom to catch us out of bed. Oh, we get to see it. Yes! There's no money. I've never asked you for anything, but right now they need you. It's not gonna happen. I've got everything I need to nail your ass in that barn. And just what do you think happens after that? What do you mean? Well, if those kids have a father, you really think there's a court out there that'll let you keep them? No! You have no claim to my children! Get the hell off my property, now! If you ever come back here, 
I'm going to kill you! Allison? Uh, and until the finale next week, it was Daddy, Daddy Hunter. Well, who is it? It was definitely not Sam. That is definitely not Sam. Somebody new, I think. I feel like it could be that guy that was on the boat at the beginning and the guy that was in the store. That seems like the kind of thing with writing that you would do where this character has been introduced in both episodes in the background that it's then like, oh shit, it was him the whole time. Oh my God. Um, but I don't know. The literal she I think whoever it is, it's going to be who shows up to buy the house as well. Let's see what we had. Tyler and Allison. Tyler felt relied on when Allison chose his memory at the house. 54% chose Tyler's memory. Pretty much down the middle, although they might be because this only came out two hours before us playing it. So there's not going to be a bunch of data in here. Um, Tyler didn't feel heard about needing time when Allison accepted the house showing. 34% accepted the appointment, 64% refused the appointment. Allison felt hopeful about becoming a family when Tyler forgave Eddie. 82% forgave Eddie, 18 didn't. That is like a small amount of harshness. Eddie was touched by Tyler's forgiveness. Um, again, same numbers. Michael was heartened by Tyler's compliment. 21% turned down Michael. 79% accepted the compliment. Um, ooh, less people forgave Tessa, but still a high number. Which I think, I take that as actually just more people... I think people in that moment want to take care of Tyler and be like, hey, choose forgiveness, more than they actually like Tessa and want to forgive her. I thought that would be way uh, different to Eddie's, though, honestly. And I guess we're going to see how all of those decisions, decisions shake out. Let's have our little sneak peek of next week, perhaps. There's something else. Look at this. What do you think? Should we give it a shot? I think the crafty goblins have one more hatch to sneak through. Let's go. What do you think? Church vibes, kind of. I feel like there's more to that priest, too. Hey, thanks for watching. There's some more videos on the screen. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe before you head out and maybe leave me a comment if you're feeling like you want to share a theory or just say, hey, I really enjoyed this and I like story games and stuff like that. Thanks, Morph. It's cool. You know, I don't know. Anyway, have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye.